Hi, my name's Al, and you've found Barking Bird Resale. I'm a part-time reseller. I go around to flea markets, uh, garage sales, thrift stores, buy stuff at a price that I can make a profit on. I take my GoPro, film it. If you're entertained by that sort of stuff, please uh, like, subscribe, comment. Uh, today we're going to be doing something a little different, though. Kind of an eBay 101 course. One of the most common questions that I hear is, Hey, I bought this stuff. I've got it listed. I've sold it. How do I ship it? One of the problems is if you've gotten that far, you've done something wrong. You should always know what you're going to ship something in before you list it. To keep that from happening in the future, we're going to go over what supplies and equipment you will need to get things shipped. Basic shipping supplies and equipment really break down into three categories. You've got the stuff you can get from free from the post office, the stuff that you'll have to buy for yourself, and the equipment that you need to make it all work. We'll start over here with the free shipping supplies from the post office. This is a flat rate envelope, bubble mailer. Whatever you can fit in that ships for a flat rate. I believe that rate is currently $7.85, but is going up later this month. We've also got a flat rate envelope. Ships for a little bit less than the bubble mailer. The 7x7x6 seven by seven by box. If you're getting much smaller than this, you're going to be shipping first class, and you really won't need the, the free postal supplies for that. We've got a series of what I call flat boxes. Uh, this is the 90, 1097. Uh, it's about 11 and a half by 2 and a half by 13. Um, what I really like about these is I can use my box resizer to create a lot of different sizes. They do also give you a few different sizes. This one's a little bit bigger. Same thing as the 1095. Then we've got the regional rate B box, which is bigger yet. You see it says regional rate B there. I don't often use this for regional rate B. I use it the same as the others, but I cover up the regional rate B uh, nomenclature and the barcode, and I'm able to use it just as a regular priority mailbox. If you don't get those covered up, you're likely to get charged more from the post office. There's the 12 by 12 by 8. This is one of my favorites. You can fit just about anything in there that isn't too big, obviously. And oftentimes I need to resize this. I cut it down a little bit so that it ships for less. Got mailing tubes. This is a small mailing tube. There's also a medium mailing tube. I've never seen the large mailing tube. I sell some golf clubs and these I'm able to uh, construct and then put two of them together end to end, slide one over the other and ship the golf clubs out that way. Then we get into the materials that I've had to buy for myself. This one obviously is from eBay. I use my uh, free shipping dollars from my store to get this. This is a nine and a half by seven and a half bubble mailer. I buy these. These are 14 by nine inch bubble mailers and do a very good job. If, if you don't have the smaller ones, you can use these and just fold them over. For the size, you list the exterior dimensions before you put anything in it. This is a 15 by 12 poly mailer. I find that is very useful for a lot of things that don't need a lot of protection. Then we have our 18 by 18 poly mailer, which is used for a box in a bag. You can put the box in the bag oftentimes and use dimensional shipping in order to ship that for less. The reason 18 by 18 is important is the largest side you can have on any measurement for your calculated dimensional shipping is 18 inches. Boxes that I've purchased myself, this is the 4 by 4 by 6 box, very good for smaller objects. I've also got a 4 by 6 by 6, I probably use more of the 4 by 4 by 6. Then again with my eBay money, I've gotten these. These are the 8 by 8 by 8 boxes. But frankly, if you're getting that big, you're going to be using the postal service boxes simply because you're getting into priority mail and out of first class mail. These work really well with hats, 
they tend to fit very well in, in here, uh, baseball type hats. Then we move on to big boxes. I always want to have one or two of these around. This is from Lowe's, obviously. It's an 18 by 18 by 6. I keep these around for things like uh, printers, uh, video game systems, things that need more space. I usually end up cutting these down with the box resizer and shipping it out that way. When I get to this size, usually I get away from the U.S. Postal Service and end up with FedEx or UPS. Then you've got to have something to protect your shipments with also. I use two different types of uh, bubble wrap. I've got the large bubbles and the small bubbles. I don't use much of the small bubbles. Usually that's uh, for void fill or for protecting small objects. The large bubbles I tend to put around those video game systems, the uh, printers that I, that I sell on occasion. They protect it very well. Many layers of that and you'll be fine. Then we've got the equipment that you need to effectively ship. The first thing you're going to need is a scale. I've been using this Accutech scale since I started. It's good up to 110 pounds. I've never, uh, I've never stressed it quite that far. Uh, very accurate, inexpensive. I think it was about $25. Does a good job. You'll need some way to put tape on the box. You can always use the, the store-bought applicators. I prefer to have a tape gun around. I prefer a 3-inch tape. Most tape is 2 inches. The 3-inch tape just tends to cover more space and be a little more secure. I prefer a little bit of a heavier tape. That's why I've got the duct tape on here. It tends to just have a cleaner application. Then you've got your box resizer. Looks a lot like a utility knife. In fact, it's based off one. Everybody's familiar with that end of it. More useful end is this right here. This is what makes it important. It allows you to resize your boxes, keeps you from having to have an endless supply of boxes. You can take big boxes and cut them down. You can change the shape of boxes with this. I'm sure you can find another video online that will show you exactly how to use that. I'm going to get one up here soon also. That about covers what we're going to do today. I appreciate you stopping by. If it was helpful, please hit the like button. Um, if you have any other questions, please feel free to ask in the comments below. Thank you and bear down.